Hello, welcome to Bumble Stitches podcast. My name's Nicola and this is episode 36. It's Sunday the 10th of March and you can find me on Instagram as Bumble Stitches and you can find me on Ravelry as Bumble Stitches too. There's also a podcast group if you'd like to come and join us over there. So a very warm welcome to any new subscribers. Thank you very much for checking out my podcast. I hope you enjoy it. And a very warm welcome back to any um, previous viewers that have come back to join me. I bet you wondered where I'd been and if I was coming back. And if I'm honest, I think I was kind of wondering if I was coming back too. Things have been a bit busy. It was the end of December that I last podcast. Well, I did a podcast in between Christmas and New Year. And then I did um, a Make Nine video and got really, you know, things get busy and hectic one thing another and kept putting off the podcast even though I had lots of things that I wanted to share with you all and then kind of the little sort of anxiety monster crept in and I was getting a bit anxious about podcasting again and wondering was it really relevant were people really interested and you know how it goes how you sort of doubt yourself so I thought today it really was kind of make or break it was either get a podcast recorded today or i kind of felt like I probably wouldn't again so I really pushed myself to get recording today so here I am and I'm very pleased to be back okay um I just want to start off by saying there's quite a lot of things I want to cover today so it might be a little bit longer than usual I hope that's okay and I do have um I've been doing quite a lot of spinning lately as well as as knitting so I will do a little bit of a spinning content at the end of this video and if going forward you would rather see a separate sort of short spinning episode um, that just sort of contains all that within one separate episode do let me know in the comments down below or in the Ravelry group if you think that would be something you'd enjoy more to keep the two things separate or if you're quite happy for it all to be in the same podcast. Well, I don't know about you, there's been lots of things happening with me and some of it has been uh, some nice yarny days out. I've been to a couple of um, yarn festivals since I saw you all last. Um, in January, I went to the Waltham Abbey Wool Show with my lovely knitting bestie, um, Amanda, who is Knitting Mummy on Instagram. And I also went to Unravel a couple of weeks ago. So I do have quite a lot of things to show you and I need you to bear that in mind when I show you what I've um, acquired since I saw you last, that it has covered a couple of different festivals in quite a long time. So yeah, don't judge me. So let's kick off with some finished objects. I've got two finished objects to share with you today and seeing as it's a little bit warm in the house to be wearing um, both of the knitted um, sweaters that I've completed, I've done a couple of little separate, very short videos just showing you what the garments look like on. So I'll pop those in as we get to the, the relevant part. But I'm going to start off first of all, I'm just going to spin round and grab my floozy cardigan. And my floozy cardigan is finally finished. And those of you that are um, long term viewers will know this has been a project on my needles for quite a while. I went great guns. It's a top-down cardigan. It's um, floozy by Libby Johnson of Truly Myrtle Designs. It's a fabulous pattern. Um, a brilliant start to colour work because all this section here um, in the yoke is actually done um, using, I think it's called mosaic knitting, the technique. So it's not stranded colour work. It's actually done by um, using slip stitches. So you're only ever working with one colour per row. So it's a really good introduction if you wanted to try and get this effect but you haven't um, done stranded colour work or you weren't you know you didn't want to start off in at the deep end so yes it has been on the needles for a long time I went great guns it's top down construction so all the fun bit was at the top um, with this lovely colour work um, yoke which is all the way around worked in one in one piece and then as is typical of me, once it got, excuse my bruise, I do keep walking into door handles. It's kind of a trait of mine. I can't actually seem to manage to negotiate my way through an open door space. But anyway, um, yeah, so then once I got onto the stockinette section, my interest kind of waned a little bit and it became a little bit more slow going. 
and did spend quite a bit of time in a project bag just languishing while I skipped on to some other projects but as part of my crack the whip cow um, which I'll give you some more details we do have a winner that I've been running in my podcast group on Ravelry we were trying to get some of our whips finished up by the end of February and I'm really happy to say that this is one of my finished objects as part of that knit along um, it's knit out of Baram U Titus which is a lovely British um, wool blend I've got one of the bands here actually I have mentioned this several times on the podcast um, but it's basically 70% British wool a blend of wool and 30% British alpaca so it's a lovely yarn it's got a little bit of a halo to it I don't know if you can just if the camera can pick that up and it's knitted up and blocked up really really well it's a really nice pattern the actual um, apart from the actual design with the color work the actual shape of it I think is a really flattering shape I will pop a video in here now to show you what it looks like on so I'll just pop that in now so this is my completed floozy cardigan and it's designed by Libby Johnson of Truly Myrtle Designs um, I wanted it to be quite a close fitting garment so I've done it so that I can wear it buttoned up just as a you know to wear it as a top with like a, a tank top underneath vest top um, or open um, really really pleased with the colour work as you can see it's a yoked design I'll just turn around you can see the back and I'm really thrilled with how it came out it's got some short row shaping around the neck here and I just added these little buttons um, these little sort of like round shell buttons so that is my finished um, floozy cardigan which I'm really really pleased with so as you can see um, it's it's a really flattering shape I can I've chosen to knit it as quite close fitting as you saw from me wearing it in the video um, so you can wear it done up with a you know like a t-shirt or vest sort of style top underneath or you can wear it open as a cardi so I think it's going to be quite a versatile um, garment in my wardrobe I have noticed now that I've got it on camera that I might have sewed the buttons on a little bit wonky it's a little tiny bit out of line so I might have to just have a little rejig there or maybe I'm being a little bit too um, picky I think it would only notice if when the, the cardigans done up but yeah this is my floozy I love it there are options I might even knit another one of these I like it so much um, maybe some different you know more bold sort of colors and you can choose I've done the full length sleeves and sort of like hip length but you can choose to make it more cropped and fitted or you can make it more oversized all the information is within the pattern so that is my first finished object which is my floozy cardigan and I couldn't be happier with it it's turned out really really well so I pop my floozy down there okay so the next finished object that I have um, is my Tecumseh sweater which is patterned by Caitlin Hunter so I'll just grab that and here it is I'll just slide back a bit so you can see so you probably most of you are probably familiar with um, the Tecumseh by Caitlin Hunter again it's a top-down sweater um, colour work this is stranded colour work this time this is not um, mosaic knitting I'm going to show you my floats because I'm really pleased with them so I don't know if you can see really really pleased with my floats and my tension on the colour work and this sweater was knit in yarn that I bought in Shrewsbury from you and ply and it's their own um, Shropshire ply I think it's called Shropshire ply DK because they do it in a four ply and a DK and the yarn itself is beautiful again it's all British wool and it's all naturally dyed by the ladies of you and ply it knitted beautifully it was ideal for colour work it's quite a grippy sticky yarn um, because it's not super wash and a really enjoyable project to work on 
the color work is simple as you can see um you probably as i say you're probably familiar with this one of my hairs on that um yeah and it's just a really nice sort of repetitive simple color work but just sort of spurs you on to the next section and so on and so forth you do split for the sleeves quite low so it's almost like a sort of a poncho style jumper but the bonus of that is when you finish you only have a small bit of sleeve to knit I'm going to pop a little video in here now of what it looks like on so you can have a look at that this is my completed Tecumseh sweater which is um, patterned by Caitlin Hunter Boylan Knitworks and as you can see it is a big jumper it's knitted in DK weight yarn um, and it splits quite low for the sleeve so you do if you put your arm you do need to wear something underneath it and I must be honest I do find this one not the most comfortable to wear I find it's a little bit high um, at the neck here but I am really pleased the way it knitted up I really like the yarn I think the colour work came out well um, but I think on reflection this isn't the best shape for me. I don't think it's particularly flattering. It makes me look far too sort of like wide and, and dumpy. Um, and it's a shame because I really, really wanted to, to love it. So I think this will just be a, a cosy up sort of sweater. But yes, so this is Tecumseh by Caitlin Hunter. Another finished object. So as you saw with me wearing it, whilst i do love this sweater i don't feel it's the most flattering shape for me i've seen lots of people um wearing theirs in pictures on instagram and on ravelry and think it looks amazing i don't know if i've knit it too big i am prone to choose a size that is actually too big and being a large you know i'm not a, i'm not a small person i am quite a large person um not in height sadly just in in size and I think if you make things too big you do tend to make yourself look even bigger and this on me is not the most flattering garment so I do have mixed feelings about it. I think as well the fact that the pattern is so bold and so horizontal and it is so wide at this point I think it's as I said it's really not the most flattering of sweaters on me but I'm pleased that it's done. I am pleased with the Sort of the technical aspects of it if you like of how it turned out how i knitted it i was very very pleased with all of that loved the yarn um but i wouldn't knit another sweater that's this shape again for sure but it's super super warm um in fact it's too warm even you know unless it's really really cold but it's going to be one of those go-to's if you just have one of those days where you can't get warm and you just want to snuggle into something really cosy it's going to be ideal for that so that is my Tecumseh by Caitlin Hunter of Boiler Knitworks pop that down there with the floozy they can have a little chat okay so that brings us now to works in progress I don't have any more whips I feel like I should have uh, sorry any more finished objects but um, I'm just glad to have got those two projects off the needles really so I'm just going to check my notes because otherwise I'm going to completely, I'm so out of practice, I'm going to forget where I'm up to. After finishing those two sweaters, I should really have concentrated on some of the other whips that I've got languishing. But I really just wanted to knit garments. So I went to the Waltham Abbey Wall Show, as I mentioned, and fell in love with the next project that I'm going to show you. And it's this, it's the Vault Sweater by Sue Stratford. And she is Sue Stratford Knits. And on Instagram, she's Knitting and Gin. So she's the um, the designer of the Knitting and Gin enamel pins that you've seen, um, you may have seen around. So this was at the show as a sample sweater. And I've very quickly learned that if there's a nice sample sweater at a show, that is my downfall because then I can see it, it's tangible, I can see how nice it is in the flesh and then that's it, I'm sold, I need to have it. So I bought the printed pattern from Sue at the Waltham Abbey show and I also bought the yarn for the, um, for the vault design 
and that was in yarn by Skein Queen. Beautiful, um, beautiful yarns, two sort of like quite striking colours there. And I just bought some DK in grey afterwards. This is a DK sweater. And what Sue had really cleverly done, rather than have you buy a full skein of each of these two colours, um, she'd prepared enough for you to do the design so that you didn't have to have lots of leftovers. So that's the vault sweater. Now it's more of a traditional construction. It's knitted as a front and a back and I haven't read as far to see how the sleeves are constructed but there will be some some seaming to do which I'm not really looking forward. I'm a bit out of practice with seaming. Now this is an intarsia design which I haven't done for years and it's got lots and lots of bits of waste yarn on it but you can get the idea so this is the front that I've completed sort of blending in with everything else isn't it so you can see that striking design on the front which I really really liked and I've I've matched mine with a um, a charcoal grey and that is by Coop Knits it's their Soxier DK really lovely to knit with and it was a very similar um, type of yarn to the skein queen so i thought it would make a really good blend so here we have it in tarsia here's the front it's really difficult to see but one of the design um, elements of this jumper that i really really liked was here at the hem so you can see you've got your ribbed hem and then you can see it goes up at the side so when you seam those two points will meet there the front and the back and it sort of raises up in a um, in a triangle at the side and it has the same detail on the sleeves as well on the cuffs so I think it's going to look really really nice when it's complete progress is not bad being DK um, done that much of the back so not much more to go before I start a little bit of shaping for the sleeves and then the two sleeves to go and but I am dreading the seam in part because I know that I'll probably end up popping it in the project bag and there it will stay so I need to try and keep the momentum up but of course now we're moving into spring the need for DK sweaters isn't quite as great so we will see but I bought this in January and it was cold then and I really wanted to do it so that is my vault sweater by Sue Stratford and of course because I bought the pattern I couldn't resist a little vault sweater pin that I popped on my um, project bag as well as I said there was really tiny little bits of the two contrast colours left over which was a really good idea rather than buying whole skeins so that is work in progress number one and then there's another sweater the sweater game is strong at the moment and this next one, it's following on from Tecumseh, it's another Caitlin Hunter design. And it's Little Cabin. So I'll show you the pattern. So Little Cabin is a design in Aran weight yarn. Or it might the pattern might call for worsted, but I'm certainly using Aran. Yeah, worsted weight the pattern calls for. And this is knit from the bottom up, and you can see the little cabins here this design here and then there are lots and lots of bobble stitches throughout even on the sleeves and then there's a row of um, very densely um, packed bobbles and then a garter stitch yoke so I, lo I really love this design I'm going to try and show you the picture in the pattern of the model wearing it so you can see it's a really nice design and again, following on from what I said earlier about not knitting sweaters that are way too big, I thought, okay, so I'll check out my size on the pattern. Let's just drop the size down and see how we get on with that. So that was my good idea. So I've started knitting it. And this is some yarn that I got on sale from Wool Warehouse here in the UK. And it was a very, very good um, price point because it was on sale. I think it was discontinued. And it's Debbie Bliss... Donegal Luxury Tweed Aran and the colourway, I don't think it has a name, I think it's just got a number, 
yeah it's just a number it's discontinued anyway but it's this lovely it's showing up quite green on screen but it's actually much more of a um a sort of like a yellow ochre almost going into like a toffee color so that's the yarn i'm using and this is my progress so it's on a um a cable at the moment that's scrunching it up so i don't know if you can see at the bottom it's quite annoying it's, it's a completely different color on the camera than it is in real life so i don't know if you can see the little cabins how they've knitted up it's quite clear on the camera it's just as i said completely the wrong color and then you go into these just never-ending bobbles which i know quite a few people that have knitted this have said oh if i never see another bobble again it'll be too soon but i actually didn't mind knitting them the way she has you do them is actually quite um it's not a bobble method where you have to keep turning your work so you knit them all from the the front side and there's a little um a little hint as well to keep the bobbles nice and proud because as you can see they are actually quite proud of the knitting they're really sort of defined bobbles so once i got the border done the little cabins i put it onto some waste yarn and popped it around my middle to make sure it would fit me bearing in mind i've gone down a size that i would normally knit and it did it was a little bit more snug than i thought but i thought well it's probably gonna give a little bit in wearing and once it's blocked and so on so i wasn't overly worried and i'm not that worried about the the body what i didn't take into consideration is the sleeves so obviously the sleeves that i'm knitting correspond with the size of sweater that i'm knitting and i've got big arms i've got sorry i keep juggling the camera i've got quite big arms um disproportioned to the rest of me or anyway let's not get into all this body um image thing but i think the uh, the sleeves are going to be too small i think they're going to be too tight i've started i started knitting the first one and this is as far as i've got now i've kind of reached a point of um being uncertain about how it's going to finish up so therefore i've lost kind of momentarily lost interest in the project because i've tried this on and it's quite snug around the bottom is again it's from the cuff up you knit it all from the from the bottom up and it is a little bit on the snug side so i'm thinking am i going to knit all of this sweater and it won't fit me i can't buy any more yarn because it is discontinued so that's put paid to any plans to rip it back and just knit the size i should have knit maybe in the first place you can see i'm getting in the right old pickle with this really um so the other option is that i could my daughter really likes it my daughter lulu she really likes the sweater and the design and she said oh well i'll have it mum but she is very tiny um so on her it would be a really huge sweater maybe too big so i don't know i don't know whether i should just frog it use the yarn for something else um and knit this sweater in some different yarn at you know a bigger size or if i should persevere and just see how it comes out and i'm sure it'll fit somebody in the family or well i don't know what the other options are really so that's as far as i've got with the first sleeve um it's got the little cabins all the way around the bottom and then you just go into the bobble pattern and it's a sort of construction where once you've got the body and the two sleeves you then join them all together and knit the yoke upwards um so it's a really good construction and all the you know the main sort of slog of it of the knitting in the body is all done so I just need to push on through but it's one of these projects where you just keep thinking and mulling over all the options and yeah so it's kind of got me stumped a little bit but I love the yarn I love the pattern I really really want the sweater so I think it's probably best to just get it finished and see what happens maybe go on a diet <laughs> So that is Little Cabin by Caitlin Hunter and that is living in my um, La Bien Aime project bag which is quite roomy and the lining matched the yarn so yeah so that's the sort of that's the sort of basis I make my decisions on. So those are my two garment works in progress. Um, I'm just going to show you my latest whip and I was totally seduced by spin cycle yarns and 
I'm trying to see where did I put the actual pattern just bear with me okay so this is my latest project and it's the shift which is a cowl designed by Andrea Mowry you can see it there you've probably seen this on Ravelry on Instagram there's the shift cowl which is this one which I think was the first um, one in the sort of this series of, of patterns that Andrea Mowry has, has designed and then there is the night shift which is a shawl version of large shawl and there's even a shift um, sweater now a short sort of cropped um, jumper in the same sort of mosaic knitting so this is the same style of knitting as the yoke in the floozy cardigan and I was very naughty and splashed out on the spin cycle yarns and this is my progress so far it's curling up a bit at the bottom so it's a point down here and it is shaped so what you actually do with this particular cowl design is there's a seam in it so you can just pop it over your head and just arrange it arranges really really simply so it's a proper cowl it's not but kind of to look like a, a shawl so I am loving it the yarn was expensive I can't deny that it was a very luxurious indulgent purchase but when the yarn arrived I absolutely fell in love with it and I think it was worth every penny that I paid for it I got this from um, Fig Tree Yarns which are a yarn online yarn shop based in Jersey in the Channel Islands um, and for anyone that doesn't know, um, the Channel Islands sit between the south coast of the UK and France, close, actually closer to France. So they're on Jersey, which is one of the Channel Isles, and they had the, um, the kits for the shift because the yarns that were used in the pattern here are a exclusive, I think, yeah, exclusive to... This particular pattern so that I think they're sold as kits rather than as individual skeins but in saying that I've seen it in so many variants of spin cycle yarns and they're all absolutely gorgeous and can you see my little um, flying llama progress keeper on there I love him I got him at Unravel he works beautifully with these yarns and he's just helping to mark out each section of the pattern and just spur me on to the end so the yarns the pattern is designed to not give you any wastage, which is good. When you've bought expensive yarn like this for a project, you really don't want to end up with lots of expensive scraps. So this is what I'm down to. I'm way, I'm sort of like coming onto the end sections now. So there's this darker one, which is very dark blues and navies. Um, this skein, which has changed from, well, They've both changed so much, these two particular skeins, but they're settling down into, this one's dark blue and lighter blues. And you can see the, if you're not familiar with the spin cycle yarn, it's got that barber pole, um, sort of like hand spun look to it. And this one here, you can see it's got this, it's gonna change again here. But the yarn is beautiful. Um, I can't remember which colorway is which. So these are their, love their branding. And it's 100% American wool. And the Spin Cycle ladies, I think there might have been um, a video that Christy Glass did where she visited their uh, mill. The two, two ladies that started Spin Cycle, and I think essentially they dye the fibre themselves and then spin it and it has that sort of hand spun look. It's just totally gorgeous. I love it. It's a shame it is so expensive because I think I would like to knit more things in it so one of the colorways that i have is leith the other one is the castle and the meadows and you might have guessed um they're all references to places in edinburgh because i think this was a pro uh, a pattern that was debuted at the edinburgh yarn festival i think last year so I am loving it. I want to get it finished as soon as I can so that I can get wearing it. I am off away next week for more Nitty Adventures. Um, going to 
the Curious Handmade Retreat in Cumbria and I would really like to have this finished by then so that I can wear it and keep cosy. So that is my shift cowl and this is what has my heart at the moment. This is the project that I am just reaching for all the time, this and my spinning. So I will be sad when it's over but I think I might be tempted to knit another one perhaps in some of my hand spun because I've seen lots and lots of projects on um, Instagram and Ravelry where people have used their hand spun and that also looks amazing because you get those really nice colour shifts and the and the texture as well. So I'll just show you a little bit close up so you can see how the colours change with the yarn and the sort of texture that you get from the slip stitches. I know it isn't everybody's cup of tea um, I think it's just such a great design and such a great look. One of my favourites. So that's the shift. Pop this one away. And the other whips, there are a few more things that um, are languishing at the moment. My Deshane sweater is still awaiting, um, just needs to be seamed, which is really naughty that's what I'm worried about on the vault sweater and I've got a couple of pairs of socks on the go and I have still got my dust of snow wrap which is about the 60% mark so I need to crack on with that but again as I said the weather because the weather's starting to change I'm not feeling the need to make a big fluffy mohair wrap because I don't think it will be warm but I do need to get that finished as well so yes that brings you up to date with what I've been working on the next thing I'd like to talk about is I'm going to go back to the Crack the Whip Cow and that was a knit along that was running in my Ravelry group from uh, the end of last year until the end of February and yes I got a couple of garments finished and lots and lots of lovely knitters that participated in the knit along also got heaps of gorgeous projects finished up so it was fantastic to see all those popping up in the Ravelry group and I think you all did a fantastic job and thank you for sharing and for knitting along with me. Now, we do have a winner. Uh, I closed the thread. I was a little bit late closing the thread. I closed it the other day. It was probably quite a few days late. But there were 35 entries in that knit along. So that was amazing to see. And Random Generator chose post number six, which is... Uh, v Shaw 7 and that's Vicky from Canada so congratulations Vicky you have won the Crack the Whip Cow prize and Vicky completed a fantastic cardigan almost a jacket that she started last year called Persistence is Key and it's got lots of detailed cabling and is quite a feat of knitting so I'm sure she feels really accomplished to have got that project finished so congratulations Vicky I have got a prize here for you and the prize was donated to the podcast by another lovely um, participant of our knit alongs and that's Sam she's UK knitter Sam and Sam sent me a really cute little card and she sent for us a skein of yarn which is this one here, beautiful hand dyed skein called Birthday Cake and you can see it's just like sprinkles, I think, do they call that confetti cake? I think they might do, but it's a really fun, gorgeous skein of yarn. It's a four ply, 85% merino, 15% nylon, that's why it feels so soft and squishy and it is from Once Upon a Time skeins and they have got a there's an Etsy shop and that's Debbie who's designed that but as I said it was donated as a prize by Sam and it also came with a really cute progress keeper little strawberry progress keeper which I'm going to see if I can open and show you I'm not very good with um, the close-ups though normally when I try and show you things like that but let's see if I can open it and show you because it is so pretty it's got little jewels on it so there we are, so if you can see, little sparkly strawberry progress keeper. So thank you for that, Sam. That was really kind of you to um, donate that to the podcast. And congratulations to Vicky because these will be heading their way to you. If you can drop me a message on Ravelry or on Instagram, um, 
with your postal address and I'll get this off to you as soon as possible and if I don't hear from you in about a week or so I'll drop you a message anyway um, because you know I don't expect everyone to be dropping everything to watch this podcast and I think it's only fair to let people know if they've won something so congratulations and congratulations to you all for finishing such amazing projects and for sharing them with me right let's pop Vicky's yarn somewhere safe so how are we doing um we're past the half an hour mark already and i've still got lots to talk to you about so i hope you're all still um with me so the other knit along that i'm running is the fluff along cow and that is where we're knitting combining with either combining our yarn with a strand of mohair or surrey alpaca or some other fluffy angora or anything like that or it on its own either is fine so you still have until the end of March to get your entries into the finished object thread and there's a chatter thread in the podcast group as well. So do pop along there and join in. And if you, it's, it's a whip that you're working on, just it's still fine. I'm, I'm really quite relaxed about rules in my knit alongs. I just like to see people joining in and, and having fun. So that runs until the end of March and there will be a prize for the winner of that as well. Right. I have mentioned already that there has been some festivals, yarn festivals, and there has been some online shopping, and there has been some visiting yarn shops when I'm on my travels. So I'll start off with the things that I purchased at Waltham Abbey Wall Show, first of all. So try and do it sort of chronologically. So I've already shared with you the... Um, the Volt Sweater yarns and pattern that I bought at that event. And the other thing that I bought, there's going to be a lot of spinning around, so bear with me. The other thing I bought there was these beautiful skeins from Verity at Truly Hooked. She only, these really, you know when you spot something on a, on, at a show or in a shop, um, on the on the racking and I just spied these and fell in love with them and there were only three skeins so this is her standard sock base 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon uh, standard sock, sock yarn and the colorway is smash just show you that and as you can see it's got a lot of everything in it's got yellow and pink and blue and green and teal and different shades of all of the above so it's just a real fun colorway so i thought well i'll get those three but i really want to knit a garment out of them i know it's going to be a bit of a crazy garment but i think it's going to work so the plan is to knit a sapilla which is a pattern by caitlin hunter um the color work, top down color work which she you know she's so well known for and I've seen that knit as a short sleeve version. I think the pattern does give you an option for a short sleeve. And I think this is the main colour with the colour work in just a neutral, like a cream, would actually be quite nice, especially for sort of spring and summer. So there is enough here um, for my size to do a sapilla with a fourth skein for the, for the colour work. So that will be hopefully on the needles um, in the not too distant future. So that was beautiful yarn from Truly Hooked. Then after that, where did I go after that? I think that it was Unravel next. Yes, it was, it was Unravel. So let's show you what happened at Unravel. We had such a lovely day at Unravel. I managed to get one of their tote bags as well. Um, this sort of black cotton, really, really nice. And it's such a fab show. If um, if you've been to it, you'll know what a good show it is. And if you haven't and you get the opportunity to go in the future, I would say you need to go because it is such a well... well the whole thing is just it's well organised, maybe with the exception of the catering. The queues were horrendous to get anything to eat at lunchtime. But in saying that, the food was nice as well. Um, but the actual yarn side of it uh, was fantastic they had everything covered every type of yarn every type of um indie dyed and there was fiber and there was 
sock weight and there was sort of luxurious blends and so many really really fantastic um vendors were at that show so it was just such an enjoyable day and bumped into so many lovely people um yeah again i went with amanda and we just had a, a really really good time she was a bit disappointing on the purchasing side though she didn't actually buy very much but i kind of tried to make up for it a little bit so i Again, I mentioned earlier about samples of sweaters at shows and we were on one of our many tours around Unravel. We like to start out with just a, a recce round where we go and have a look and see what's available. Then we stopped for a spot of lunch and then we went back and started to make some purchases. And on one of those rounds, those tours around Unravel, um, spotted this dye here, which is Dye Dye Done and they had some amazing sample sweaters hanging up in their stand. I'll show you the pattern because I have already bought the pattern and printed it out. And this is the sweater that I fell in love with at the show and tried it on, it's called Rippling Around. I don't know if you can see the details on that yoke. Really, really lovely. This sort of section here, they're sort of like crossed over stitches. It's really, really pretty. And the hem, again, has got some interest. The rib is shallower here and then increases up here. So there's lots of really sort of fun elements to the design. And this is designed by, now I'm not going to try and pronounce this. It's designed by Hannah and she is on Ravelry. And she is also the lady that was um, running the stand Unravel. So she kindly let me try on the sample and help me with yarn quantities. And so I purchased this, which is her Stella base. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up. It's quite dark, but it's a very dark sort of aubergine colour. Sort of blending into everything else, isn't it? That's a bit better. And it has got some Stellina in. It's a 75-25 superwash merino and nylon. Um, sorry, 20% nylon, 5% Stellina. So a standard sock weight, um, Stella base and aubergine is the colourway. So I have got in my Unravel bag four skeins of this gorgeousness to make that jumper. And I think it's going to be lovely. I really can't wait to get cracking on that. I've got so many, my head is just full of garments um, that I want to knit. I've still got all the make nine things that I need to do um, and the only progress I'm making on that so far is the little cabin and already by the beginning of March I have been distracted by so many new patterns so I guess make nine is a guideline and uh, not a hard and fast. Also whilst unravel I had a little look at Dusty Dimples uh, Aisha's stand and she has the most amazing dyeing skills and I fancied something well what happened was I will show you the pattern first if I can bring it up I did print the pattern out but it doesn't come with um with a photograph so I will show you it on my I'll just bring it up on my iPad I hope it doesn't strobe or whatever on here so this is the Oh, is it going to like it? You, hopefully you can get the gist enough here. So this is the Fabulosity Shawl by Casapinka. And I'm just trying to get it so you can get an idea. I can't put it any closer because it's blowing out on the light. But you get the idea. It's a three colour shawl. It's actually a four colour shawl. I think that's got some mosaic knitting in one of the sections. And I wanted mine to be exactly like that. So... Amanda helped me do some scouting around the various vendors at Unravel and we found these gorgeous skeins at Dusty Dimples and this one here is Aqua. This is actually on an MCN base and then these two are on a merino nylon base and this one's called Hermione's Gown. And this one is called Baby Doll. And they are all just beautiful and perfect, I think, for that particular project. So I'm really, really looking forward to getting those cast on. And for the fourth skein, 
I went with a skein from Stranded Dye Works, which is the, I think this is Frost, no, First Frost, I was going to say Frostbite, First Frost. So I think these together will make a really lovely fabulosity shawl. So it was a bit naughty. I didn't, I don't really need another shawl, that's for sure, but it's just so stunning, I couldn't resist. And the interesting thing was when I came back from Unravel and I was showing Justin my purchases and he was looking at them and having a squish and whatever and he said this one's different this one feels different from these two and he picked out the MCN one so yeah I was quite impressed of his yarn squishing abilities to identify that it was different from these two but aren't they fabulous colours I just think it's going to look amazing when it's all done. final thing in my bag is a sock set that I got from Stranded Dye Works and I really you probably noticed we actually with sort of colors like this and this I'm sort of stepping outside of my comfort zone a little bit and this is a 75-25 um, merino nylon sock weight set in gloom which is the grey and limoncello which is the almost neon um, shade here sort of like very acidic sort of yellowy shade and I'm not sure if this will be a pair of socks it might be with um because this is a 20 gram mini or if I'll just add grey to my stash because grey is always really handy isn't it to to mix with other colorways and pop this as a nice little bright um edging on something or I don't know yet, but I didn't want to buy a full skein of this. I didn't feel quite brave enough to do that, but I thought that this is sort of like an entry level to something a little bit brighter, maybe, and a little bit different for me. And it was fun, so I really enjoyed buying that. And I think that is everything from... I showed you my bag, didn't I? And my little llama um, progress keeper on my shift was from Unravel as well. I did buy some fibre. Um some spinning fiber but as i mentioned at the beginning of the podcast i may leave um i'll talk a little bit about spinning at the end and then i think i might see if you guys would rather have a little separate spinning episode every now and again just to keep things a little bit separate but you can let me know what you think so those are all the acquisitions from unravel and festival uh, not festival why do i keep calling it that Waltham Abbey Wall Show and then on my travels recently I was in Lancaster um, which is in the northwest of England and I found a lovely lovely yarn shop called Northern Wool um, lady in there called Kate and I popped along in between my appointments to just have a little browse and she had some amazing products in her shop I did buy again some spinning fibre in there and I picked up some beautiful um, mohair and this is by West Yorkshire Spinners now if you're familiar with West Yorkshire Spinners you'll know them as I did more for their um, really lovely sock yarns I know they do DK as well and some other some other types of yarn but primarily people know them for their sock yarns their sort of self patterning um, and self striping colourways that they do in loads of lovely different colourways but I didn't know they did mohair and this is it's just called beige, the colour. It's 80% mohair, 20% nylon. So it's not a silk mohair blend. But it's still really, really soft. It's 400 metres on a 100 gram hank. So normally, my understanding is that mohair is... You normally get a 400 metre length on a 50 gram skein. So to my mind, this is telling me that this is almost twice as thick as normal, normal mohair. Um you know sort of like the indie dyed skeins that we're familiar with so it'd be interesting to see how this knits up the colorway is beautiful um there was a really nice shawl at unravel um on vicky of west green loft yarns stand and it was called sock set and i can't remember the name of the designer but it was designed as part um of the socks on the beach um group meetup group that takes place in brighton and it was a really beautiful shawl. It was three colours, um, two sock yarns and one mohair. And I think 
this will go well with two really lovely skeins that I've got in my stash to perhaps do that design so that's a possibility for this but it was such a really nice find in that shop to find a yarn that I hadn't sort of seen before and the weight intrigues me as well to see how it knit up I think it'd be really quite fluffy and lovely so I bought that from Kate at Northern Wool and I also bought from her she had some lovely pro products um, that are made by a company called what are they called oh gosh I'm really rubbish at let's start off by telling you this is a wool wash bar and they are made on a farm in Cumbria and it's called Nibthwaite Grange Farm Cumbria it's a wool wash bar with lanolin and apparently this is their sheer delight and it says it's handmade by the soap dairy using creamy Jersey milk from our farm. So it's lanolin and they've, they've got a, a Jersey cow on the farm and that's they use the milk to make the, the wool wash bars. So I thought that was really lovely. There were lots of different, um, no, there weren't lots of different fragrances in this. There were lots of different fragrances in the people's soap, like for your own body. But in this wool one, it's just a, just a very clean, natural sort of fragrance and came in this really cute little bag so I've only ever used sort of eucalan and soak and stuff like that so it will be really nice to try one of these natural um, wool wash bars so I got that there and I also picked up this little hand balm sort of like a lotion in a in a tin and this is called where the marshmallows grow and it's lanolin and marshmallow root again from the soap dairy and it's just a little I don't know why I'm smelling it, you can't smell it. But it's really nice and it's one of those really nice sort of like little solid bars that you can put on those little snaggy bits on your fingers. So that was really nice to pick those up too. And while I remember, before I forget, um, as well as the prize that Sam sent in for the one of the, the for the knit along that Vicky won, um, one of the previous winners of our one of our knit alongs was um, Ronnie and she's in Israel and she sent me some sweeties, um, some Israeli sweets, some chocolates and sweets and also some tea bags and some really cute little stitch markers and I just wanted to show you those because they're really progress keepers rather because they're really really sweet so she sent me these a little teacup this one is a honeycomb and a bee and they're really cute little buttons so thank you Ronnie that was really really kind of you it was such a nice little surprise to receive in the post sweeties are long gone obviously but I was just saving these to share and show everybody on the podcast so thank you so I think that's all my purchases that I've made since I saw you all last but I did have my birthday at the beginning of March and one of the things that I had on my um wish list my amazon wish list was a new yarn winder and justin bought it for me so i'm going to show it to you i'm trying not to drop it it's a bit of a beast so he bought me this really lovely knit pro wooden um ball winder and you can see it's quite a big it's going to take i think it says it can take up to 500 grams of yarn so i thought that would be really cool it's a little bit I'm a bit disappointed that because the way my desk is shaped at the edges it's sort of like got another piece of wood underneath I'm having problems fixing it with the little bar um, you know clamping it down but I will figure out a way but isn't it lovely and I have tried it out a couple of times and it's so much better than my old ball winder and it didn't give me one of those big tangly messy yarn cakes so that was a brilliant birthday present okay so I am going to talk to you about spinning for a little while just for a few minutes hopefully because I'm really pleased with how I've been getting on um, for those of you that don't know I bought at Fiber East last year I bought a drop spindle from Spin City which is really pretty and I couldn't use it and I felt like it was a disaster and didn't bother anymore but I just had this feeling that if I had a spinning wheel I would be able to spin but I didn't want to um, invest in one just on the off chance that I might like it but I was very lucky to um, 
be gifted a spinning wheel by a very kind lady that I met on Instagram and it was an Ashford Kiwi and me and my little Kiwi have been very happy. I went to a lady fairly locally and took a spinning lesson with her for a couple of hours and more recently I've been watching lots of spinning um, podcasts and tutorials on YouTube and lots and lots of people had mentioned a class on what was Craftsy which is now Blueprint all about spinning and I thought I'd go and investigate and it was brilliant and I've actually since subscribed to Blueprint and there are so many really good classes on there not just about spinning knitting weaving dyeing spinning sewing embroidery cooking I mean just like loads and loads of stuff so I was quite impressed actually I thought it was going to be like you know not really for me but it's really really good so I'm working my way through lots of spinning classes on there and I have got some yarn that I've spun that I'd like to share with you I must also mention um, lovely Grace from um, Babbles Travelling Yarns podcast. She did an Instagram live. Um, she's a very, very good spinner. And she was showing how to chain ply on an Instagram live. And it totally inspired me to have a go. Um, it was my first attempt at chain ply and it wasn't fabulous. But I did it and I think with some practice like most things I will get better so this um, skein here is fiber that was from the fiberhut.co.uk and it's a combed fiber top in them in Mer it's a merino fiber in the peppermint colorway now when I was a complete newbie I mean I still am a newbie to spinning but I just because I love knitting with merino blends and merino yarn I just thought yep yeah, merino that's what I need it's not the best yarn uh, fibre to begin spinning with. I have I quickly learnt that it isn't the best. And I think the very first thing I tried to spin was a beautiful braid I bought from Spin City. And it was merino and silk. Well, if any of you are spinners, you probably realise that I didn't get on very well with that for a first spin. But it's all about learning, isn't it? And so this is merino. It wasn't an awesome singles to start with. But I did a chain ply and practised and it's not bad, it's very thick and thin, it's not amazing but I'm sure it will be used for something. So that's one skein that I did and I then went back to my more, what I'm more comfortable with at the moment which is just doing two bobbins of singles and then doing a two, plying them together to make a two ply and this skein here is from now I bought this at Waltham Abbey Wall Show and it's by Dragon Hill Studio and it's Polworth which is a much more forgiving forgiving fibre for a new spinner I love the colourway I think it's really really pretty I think this would work beautifully in a shift cowl or something one of those sort of mosaic knitting um, patterns I'll just undo the skein to show you and this was my best spin to date so again you know it's not perfect but I'm guessing by its very definition hand spun yarn isn't meant to be perfect if you want perfectly uniform yarn you'll just buy commercial yarn or other sort of more um, manufactured yarns but it's for me at the moment it's it's all about the process and I'm just really really enjoying spinning I find that you know if I'm a bit stressed out or a bit I don't know don't really know what else to do if I just go and do some spinning for a, a you know even half an hour it really helps clear my mind and it relaxes me it's very soothing um I didn't find it so soothing when I first started doing it because I couldn't do it and I was getting frustrated but now I've got into more of a rhythm and I'm starting to be able to spin for a while without my yarn breaking or whatever I'm finding it much more enjoyable and relaxing so this was yeah I was very very pleased to have, have got this one um, and it's all been washed and and dried and all the processes that you have to do that I wasn't aware of to actually make the yarn so yeah so that's come along quite nicely and I have got another um, this was another Dragon Hill studio 
fibre braid that I picked up at Waltham Abbey Wall Show. And this is a blend of Polworth and two different types of Merino. There aren't any colourways on these, but I have, I've done the, the two bobbins already. Now, this is clearly, I'm not very good at getting even bobbins. Um, although they are within about two grams of each other. So I shall be getting these plied up a bit later and hopefully produce a fairly reasonable skein of yarn. So spinning has been really taking up a lot of my time. I've really been enjoying it. At the moment on the wheel, I've got these beautiful, um, I put a picture on my Instagram actually, because they look so pretty. These are just little baby braids and they come in a whole sort of rainbow of colours. I won't be able to show them all to you because I'll drop them, but you get the idea. And these are beautiful to spin with. They're merino again, and I've spun them, um, I've split them in half, so I've got the same as I've got here, but it's already on the wheel. And I started with the yellow, and then I went through the orange and the peach into the pink the sort of mauvey colour to purple and then to the blue. And what I'm planning to do is to, I'm, I'm spinning one bobbin from one end, starting at one end of the, the colour range and then the other one from the other way so that I apply them opposite to each other so that eventually the yellow will be applied with the blue and so on through the colours so that it's just like a really nice sort of like I really like the barber pole in effect and I think it would look really really pretty going through all those colours so I'll be able to share that with you next time on here or as I said um, maybe on a separate little spinning video so I think that is I think I've spoken far too long I've got a sore throat now because I haven't didn't bring a drink up with me um, and I did get myself a bit worked up about today and I needn't have because now I'm back and talking to you all. It just feels really natural again. So um, hopefully it has been OK to watch. I am going to be busy this week getting ready to go to the um, Curious Handmade Retreat and see lots of lovely ladies that I haven't seen for a while. And I will be going with Amanda. So we will have lots of adventures on the way I would say I would do vlogs and stuff like that but I'm just so rubbish at doing stuff like that I feel really self-conscious getting my camera like my phone out in public and filming and stuff like that but who knows we might have a brave moment but I doubt it so I will see you all when I'm back from the retreat to tell you all about what we got up to there and towards the end of the month obviously the fluff along cow will close as well so thank you a really huge thank you all for coming back and watching me today and I hope you have a really nitty time and take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.